Today we have here is this Cube A7A from Radsa which has an all winner A733 octa core SoC. It has a dual core A75 up to 2 GHz, a hexa core Cortex A55 at 1.8 GHz with three tops of NPU capabilities. In terms of the size it is the same as the Raspberry Pi 5 but it won't fit into the Raspberry Pi 5 cases because of the arrangement of the ethernet and the USB ports. It has three tops NPU and an imagination BX SM GPU supporting OpenGL, Vulkan and OpenCL. It has a low power DDR5 RAM, a gigabit ethernet port, one USB 3.1 port, three USB 2.0 port, a USB C supporting OTG 2.0 and power, HDMI port supporting 4K at 60 frames per second, a 3.5 mm audio jack with microphone, Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.4 an eMMC or UFS module connector and finally a PCI Express 3.0 FPC connector this means you can connect your raspberry pi 5 hatch to this sbc now in terms of the os we have a debian and an android image provided by ratsa and currently at the time of making the video there were no ambient builds for this yet so i installed a debian image and accessed it via ssh Now at idle without any heat sink the temperatures were about 54 degrees celsius just to see how high the temperatures can go to i ran the sysbench test and the cpu temperatures went to about 75 degrees celsius without any heat sink attached to it now for the test i have decided to attach a heat sink to the a7a i put the thermal pads attach the heat sink to the board and then finally connected the fan to the fan pins on the first boot the fan ran at full speed all the time so i changed the settings in the r setup to set it up as step wise after running some stress test the fan would start somewhere at 69 degrees celsius and then would go full speed at 70 degrees celsius first i ran the sysbench test for calculating prime numbers up to 20000 for each of the 10000 request made to it and the total task took about 25 seconds with about 3900 requests being processed per second during the test the temperatures grew to about 65 degrees celsius but the fan did not get triggered now comparing the performance with the raspberry pi 5 it was slightly shy by 1 second in completing the entire task but it was far better than the raspberry pi 4 then i ran the memory bandwidth test and found an average of 4900 megabytes per second for mem copy while for block size of 1 kilobyte the block copy was about 40% lower as compared to the raspberry pi 5 ranging around 2500 megabytes per second i also ran the tiny mem bench test and it showed better performance here than the pi 4 but still falling behind the raspberry pi 5 i did a little bit of digging and found that the lpddr5 is not used at its full capabilities as the clock frequency is set to 1800 megahertz for the 8 gb ram variant if it had to be set to 2400 megahertz then we would have seen some higher transfer rates I raised it on the Rasa forum and apparently 2400 megahertz is currently available on the 4 and 6 GB variant and not yet available for the higher RAM variants. I would be keeping an eye on it and will post any updates about it. So follow me on Twitter and also subscribe to this channel here. Next I ran Geekbench test and I got a score of 336 for single core and 1496 for multi core which is nearly twice more than the Raspberry Pi 4 but a tad bit lower than the Raspberry Pi 5 Now in terms of power consumption at idle it was sipping about 2.8 watts of energy without any heat sink but while i was running the geekbench test during the multi core performance phase the consumption went to about 8 watts of energy usage which also includes the fan spinning up now this board has a pci express 3.0 slot to expand the board's capabilities so i connected an nvme hat and apparently on the first go it did not detect the nvme i raised a topic on the forum and there were some incompatibility issues related to the various hats and the nvmes that i used after installing some custom packages provided by the ratsa engineers i got it working and got speeds of about 521 megabytes per second even though the nvme was connected at gen 3 speeds with one lane connectivity which i found it to be lower in comparison to what i got on the raspberry pi 5 Next I tested the gigabit ethernet ports giving about 940 megabytes per second for uploads and downloads. 
Then I checked the USB 3.1 port and the LSUSB command shows that it did mount my USB 3.0 to NVMe adapter to the 10,000 megabit bus indicating that the USB port supports USB 3.1 Gen 2 speeds. I then ran a flexible I.O. transfer test and got about 1000 megabytes per second, copying about 60 gigabytes in 60 seconds which was really good. Next, as usual, one of my tests is running Home Assistant on it and check how one of the voice assistant component that is Whisper performs. I installed Docker and then ran Home Assistant, Whisper and Piper using Docker. I configured Whisper to use small int 8 model and it was able to convert speech to text in about 7.6 seconds. Now this was way better in comparison to the Raspberry Pi 4 but was shy by 1 second as compared to the Raspberry Pi 5 for the same small int 8 model. Now since the Debian image also comes with a desktop environment, I also checked how that one performed. Firstly, I saw that Chromium did not use hardware decoding for video. Hence, when I ran a YouTube video at 1080p, it dropped a few frames at the beginning but worked smoothly further. When I switched to 4K, it was a bit choppy as it was dropping a few frames along the way. I ran GL Mark II test and it used OpenGL 3.2 to use the Imagination BXM GPU. I also ran VK Mark test and it was able to use the GPU via Vulkan. Now with all these tests, it feels that the board is still better than the Raspberry Pi 4 and can be still comparable to the Raspberry Pi 5 in terms of the specs and the AI capabilities provided by the built-in 3 tops NPU. But I still feel that this is lacking behind by software. Like for example, the DRAM frequency can be clocked at higher frequency to get better RAM performance and also needs to increase its supported range of NVMEs. But remember even when Raspberry Pi 5 was released, not all NVMEs were working on it and also had some power related issues. So I would still give this board some more time in terms of software updates as I see that the Ratsa engineers are pretty responsive to make updates towards it and it might be even better than the Raspberry Pi 5 for the same cost and with having more RAM. This QB A7A cost about 39 euros for the 6GB variant while on AliExpress it cost about 48 euros taking it to about 60 euros including shipping. Now I already have the next version of this that is the Ratsa QB A7Z and I'll be making a video about it so make sure to subscribe to the channel to see how that one performs. Now if you want to support this channel there are links into the description below wherein you can buy me a coffee or you can support me via Patreon. Till then I'll see you in my next one.